what's up everybody we are going to be doing the monthly market update for may 2021 where we go over the latest happenings across the headlines of what's impacting our bottom line as investors and what to be on the lookout for in the future my name is lane kaoka i run simplepassivecashflow.com currently owner of 4500 rental units and the creator of the content at simplepassivecashflow.com and Simple Passive Cashflow Podcast. This is a story about a dude named Lane. Then one day he went and tried to rent them out, and then he became one of the man. Before we get started, make sure you guys go to the new YouTube channel that I've created. It is more of a fun channel, not so quite made for accredited investors, but for the younger kids out there just getting started under a quarter million half a million dollars net worth currently ninety thousand views so far check that out it is called rich uncle on your youtube channel 1.9 thousand subscribers and that is me the girl version of me so let's get started oh yeah if you want to check out the podcast it's on youtube itunes stitcher spotify google play so a few teaching points before you get started into the news First one here, teaching point, passive losses. So a lot of the K1s are coming back to investors now. K1s are the simplified form of, some of you guys have rental properties. They are the super cumbersome, confusing schedule E's. K1s are so much more simpler. Here, an example, investor put in, actually this is mine. I put in $60,000 into this one investment and got a $47,000 deduction in the first year or 70% of what I put in as the first year. Some of you rental property owners know you can deduct the price of the property over 27 years and get that paper loss. But with syndications, private placements, you can do a big cost seg and get a huge amount more of passive losses. And we are very giddy over all the cool things we can do with these passive losses, which you can check out more at simplepassivecashflow.com slash tax. If you guys are tired of flipping houses, I know I would be. It's a pain in the butt to do that stuff. You guys need to act more accredited if you guys are getting on the path to accredited investor status. Here, go to this website, simplepassivecashflow.com slash BRR, B-R, which stands for Buy, Rent, Rehab, Refinance, Repeat. I'm not a big fan of this, and read this article to find out why. Now, there are a lot of different potential changes coming through Congress. One of those things is called these exclusionary zoning processes. So what this is, to say it in a semi-PC way, is basically what we used to have. This country needs more workforce housing, right? B, C, and even call it D-class housing because we have a growing population in America and a growing lower middle class. The wealth gap is getting bigger and bigger every day. Now, in the past, there's this kind of this, the same, not in my backyard, right? The rich people are like, yeah, we don't want these like low income or semi low income apartment complexes or these basically the projects. Right? We want to keep them separate. Now, this not in my backyard concept is trying to be going away. And I think this is good, right? This is exactly what I invest in good lower income properties scattered throughout decent areas. When you have the not in my backyard concept going on, you that's how you have ghettos. That's how you have the projects, right? There's huge segregation between the rich area and the super poor area. And this is all stuffed into the big stimulus plans to help produce more affordable units, which this country needs much more of. And guess what, folks? Rents are going back up. National rents are beginning to upward trend after being flatlined in 2020 with the pandemic. So Hashtag rents do. If you're a landlord, rejoice. We're going to get into some of the headlines here. And you know, so these are some of the macro uh, economics. I think a lot of the investors like when we dive in, highlight this for them. But I think it's no secret that people are getting the heck out of the high price areas, such as the Bay Area, San Jose, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Southern California, moving to these more pro-economic areas, pro-growth areas where um, the cost of living is just a lot less. And there is just as good job prospects there. So these are six of the places a lot of people are moving towards. Air, Phoenix, Arizona, Austin, Texas, Las Vegas, Dallas, Texas, Miami, and Atlanta, Georgia. And where are they coming from? I think California, San Jose, and Los Angeles are more of the likely candidates, especially for the Texas and West Coast markets such as Phoenix 
And for Atlanta and Miami, uh, a lot of people are moving away from New York, Chicago, uh, DC from those areas. And if you guys are checking this out on the podcast form, which this also gets released uh, once a month, we have this, we have nice slides and cool pictures for you guys to check out on the YouTube channel. Also, if you haven't yet joined our Facebook group, the GUI, which we have, we engage in conversation on these topics there. Moving on to the Bloomberg article where San Francisco residents, because there's a big exodus leaving the Bay Area. A lot of them are moving to Sacramento, which is adjacent, which is my obvious pick for people who don't want to totally re relocate out of the area. But a lot of them are moving to Dallas, Austin, Houston, Texas, and Phoenix and Tucson, Arizona, in addition to Las Vegas. So more demographic trends. Now, what we got displayed here on the screen are the red states, are the top states for outbound migration. Red is bad and green is good in this case. So that's where the inbound migration is coming in. I think a lot of investors have been clamoring about Boise, Idaho, but something you gotta remember about Boise, it's still under a quarter million population, which is absolutely nothing in my opinion. It's smaller than a tertiary market. I won't really invest in places unless it's maybe half a million or greater population unless it's a really good deal, of course, but you know, I still want to stay with solid tertiary markets. A little bit of humor for you guys, I'm not endorsing any drugs, but uh, come to simplepassivecashflow.com, you want to be happy. So Yahoo Finance reports that the Fed holds rates near zero, notes rising inflation as US economy strengthened. So I think this is no secret. Interest rates are still on a historic low. They are creeping up a little bit, but Still all time lows for the most part, but inflation is here. Inflation is here, folks. If you don't believe it, this is the game that governments play where they go into all this debt. The United States has the best military. So we have the liberty of creating all the free money we, we can create so that all we're trying to do is basically uh, inflate our debts away. When your parents bought that 30 year mortgage way back when, that debt is nothing compared to today. And that's essentially what the government is doing today, which I think is pretty smart. A lot of people get all wrapped up on I mean, what's the debt number today. It really doesn't matter in my opinion, but how I'm playing it and where I'm putting my money and where my mouth is, is I'm buying assets that go up with the pace of inflation. I think one thing is certain, those people who keep money in assets that don't rise with inflation are going to be the losers. People with cash in the bank will be the losers. Um, some more population growth statistics from the Yardi Matrix. Where are, where is the rent growth going up and up? I think a lot of the investors, they key in all types of different data sources like job growth. They key in on certain employers. But to me, I think the biggest thing that I look in just in terms of a numbers perspective is what are the rents doing on a quarterly and annual basis? And this kind of sums it up right here. The rents still going up five, 6% in the in an empire. Sacramento, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Tampa are the top five. The places where they're decreasing, New York, San Jose, San Francisco, Seattle, DC are the losers. This is just another same data, but broken up based on the left side, you have all asset classes. And then in the middle, you have this lifestyle asset class, which is more your luxury, your higher end stuff. And then what we like to invest in is this asset class called renter by necessity. In other words, People have got to rent here because they don't have too much money. They're stuck paying $500 a month for a one bedroom to $1,500 a month, one bedroom in that vicinity or workforce housing. Whereas some of our clients, they decided that they don't want to have this house. It's too much time. It's old, right? So they'd rather move into a luxury one to three bedroom apartment, get all these cool luxuries, get a pool that they don't have to clean, even get trash valet. It's a non-traditional approach to spending a money on where it really counts and getting money out of that down payment, that debt equity, and getting it working to build a stable financial future for their families, as opposed to doing it the traditional way of buying a primary residence to live and seeking that big down payment in there as dead, lazy equity, not doing jack. And also for going on, now they have that big monthly payment and then other stuff. So here's some rent growth trends from some of the top markets. I think a lot of these top five markets, I don't invest in Sacramento or in Inland Empire. I don't think I ever invest there. It's just too expensive for the rent that I get there. Again, I follow this 
threshold of 1% rent to value ratio or greater. So you take the monthly rent divided by the purchase price and I need to get something that's 1%. So I'm able to cash on a monthly basis because I don't really invest off of the appreciation potential of it. Great if it happens, but I consider that gambling. So folks who have, you know, run a, a properties in Seattle, California, say they have a lot of appreciation. Good for you guys. Easy come, easy go. I want to invest for cash. Uh, those people investing in that nature are, like I said, gambling. And these are the, what I call the unsophisticated or dumb money. Or in this graphic, John Burns calls these the investor mania 2.0 categories. There's four of them. So the first one is the single family home landlords. Now, the reason why these are the dumb money is because it's easy to get a rental property. Anybody can just get into it and there's a high competition value. And this is why we try and buy apartments, you know, that are higher than five to $10 million. So we can rise above these types of mom and pop investors. The next one that I think everybody thinks about when they think of investor mania is the house flippers, right? The HGTV stuff. It makes for great TV, I admit, but you're hundred percent reliant on the fact that the prices are going to keep going up. Sometimes if you're flipping in the right location, like a secondary market, like Birmingham, Atlanta, Indianapolis, Kansas City, Little Rock, you have the exit strategy to be able to cash flow on the property with a 20% down payment. But other than that, you're bleeding money. If things go wrong, you have to switch to a forward strategy. This is why in our group, we do not flip or do any of these first strategies. Uh, another one is foreign investors buying secondary home, right? This is the international dub money. And look, they've got a lot of money. They can do what they want. And then home ownership helpers. So these are the people that have pulled rental own groups or shared home equity platform. Another Yardy report here, this is showing the average units absorbed per property. So this is a word that we call absorption. So basically how much stuff you have there, how quick is it going to get uh, leased up? And as you can see, the blue was 2019 and the absorption rate was a lot lower than what it was in, it was a lot higher than in 2020. A red cafe came up this cool table of the top 30 hottest rental markets. And what's a hot rental market? They defined it as the same thing as absorption is another way of describing it, but the inverse of it is vacancy days. If there was a vacant unit, how long did it go before getting filled? Some of the hottest in the countries are in the low twenties. So it takes just under a month to lease up that property. Some of the occupancies on some of these markets are in the 96 to 98% range. We like to run our properties in the mid to low 90s. Anything higher than that, it's just a sign that you're, you're a rent store high enough. You're not charging for your properties. You want to attract the best tenants and you want to always be pushing rents. Yahoo Finance also reports, Warren Buffett is right. Inflation is running rampant. So, and I quote here, we are seeing substantial inflation, says Warren Buffett, said this at the Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholder meeting. We are raising prices. People are raising prices to us and it is being accepted. And another quote here, people have money in their pocket and they pay higher prices. It's almost a buying frenzy, Buffett said, noting that the economy is red hot. So there you heard it there from the Oracle of Omaha, but uh, Buffett knows what he's talking about. And unfortunately, this whole pandemic, it's hurt a lot of people. And yes, we want to be sensitive to that, but we also want to call out the fact that a lot of folks, especially on the higher end, the white collar workforce out there, maybe some of us listening to this recording, we're doing pretty well, right? If you're able to keep your job and work from home, yes, you weren't able to go traveling and go on your nice vacation this year and pay for those sports tickets, the football tickets that you wanted to, that's a little annoying. But overall, people are putting money in their pockets. These stimulus checks are going out. It's just going to cash savings. I think it's unfortunate that it's, again, it's the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer and divergence of wealth between classes. And here the government is trying to do a good thing, but oh my goodness, I fear that this is becoming a 401k 2.0. So the headline read here is secure 2.0, which stands for some kind of Governments trying to help people um, save for their retirement. Um, the Secure 2.0 Retirement Bill clears committee and moves closer to passage. By no means is this finalized and it's going to be um, different ways to get it to change. But you can go to um, our Facebook page and download the, the actual transcription of what that document is at this point. 
like I said, it'll probably change many times over, but my attitude on this is I'm a little worried because this is just like the damn 401k again. And to me, the 401k wasn't a really that great of a deal. I see it more as a way of the government getting in cahoots with all these brokerages. And now these brokerages are able to sell all their products, their mutual fund projects, which are fee laden and have carried interest on their side where they get compensated whether or not the price goes up. And ultimately, this is what robs a lot of hardworking Americans of their retirement. Why else can you just buy a rental property and make 20, 30% on your money? If you don't believe me, go to simplepassivecashflow.com slash returns. Take a look at that video where I break down all the numbers, how you're making money with cash flow, which is the monthly revenue, the tax benefits, the mortgage pay down, and the property appreciation. Right? You're making money four ways. Again, if you want to take my word for it, 20, 30% a year, if you don't trust me, go look at my math at simplepassivecashflow.com slash returns. But this is very early on when I bought my first rental. I was like, what the heck? How am I only making like 8 to 10% in all my stock stuff? The stuff that I'm supposed to do. But I'm doing so much better in these like a simple rental property, a turnkey rental of all things that aren't that great. And then I discovered the truth, right? If everybody just did what I did and bought a handful of rental properties, they'd be financially free very quickly. How would society function? But, and how would all the Wall Street executives get all their salaries and build these big buildings in the middle of New York or all these city centers in the financial districts? We can't have that happen. We need all the American citizens to put their money in mutual funds so we can just feed them to death in their sleep. But anyway, I digress. If you guys want to join our community, we have the family office Ohana Mastermind. To learn more, go to simplepassacashflow.com slash journey. This group is pretty much a accredited investor only, so million dollar net worth and above, or you make over $250,000 a year. You get access to all the e-products that I've created, including the remote investor e-course, syndication LP guide, 12 month investor plan, trade line hacking guide. But the power of this group is the network, right? So we do bi-weekly Zoom conference calls. You get access to the entire library and we are more than a deal vetting group but we are here to share best practices for tax legal infinite banking and legacy creation and the big thing is the network right magical things happen when you get other like-minded working professionals around you that are pure passive investors if you guys are new check out the incubator at simplepassivecashflow.com incubator here you'll learn how to buy your first rental property if you're just starting out now a little bit of background on what i'm doing personally in my own life every month i try to do a recap on what i've been working on in terms of these six categories first is growth so i've been trying this whoop thing so it's like this bracelet i wear but it's not like some like the Fitbit, that thing is lame, but this thing is pretty cool. Like I'm a big techie and into fitness and I haven't seen anything like this. It does your HRV and it also like tells you if you can hit it hard at your workout today, that's what this recovery thing is. It tells you what your HRV is. Ideally you want to have a lower HRV, it tells you how much you worked out that day. So this is great for me because I'm always in self-preservation mode. I don't want to work out too hard. And it tells me, hey, you should hit a seven or a 14 today because your recovery is good. And it also is a sleep coach. It also tells you how much sleep you should be getting. And the cool thing about this is we can create teams. So I joined my CrossFit gym. I have a household um, that I'm a part of. So we compete. It's fun. It's growth. It's something different. Um, always move to get better. Um, how do I get contribution in my life? Well, I started the Rich Uncle YouTube channel. Now, this has been an idea for quite some time. Simple Passive Cash Flow caters towards accredited investors today. We help people buy their first rental properties as turnkey remote rentals, and then eventually become a credit investor and beyond. That's the, where the private placements and syndications and all these high net worth uh, wealthy people tactics come in. But what do you do if you know, you're just starting out, right? You just graduated college, like how I did back in 2007. And I had a good paying job. But what do you do? Where do you start off? Because everybody's telling you all this nonsense about the 401k, mutual fund, diversifying and 25% international stocks, 25% mid cap, all this type of stuff. I am tired of listening to people who don't know what they're talking about and still working their job. The idea is don't take financial advice from people who are not financially free. So I quit my job. So you know what? I'm just going to make this rich uncle channel and try and help people the way I think I can. And if you guys are interested, um, check it out. Maybe if you guys have younger folks in your life, pass it on. It's supposed to be a little bit more fun. 
and a little bit less dry than the content we covered here at Simple Passive Cash Flow Land. There I am trying to help get them away from their other coworkers at work telling them to, hey, if you wait till you're 67 years old, you can get a lot more money from your pension fund. That one drives me crazy. Another category that I was trying to do this month was significant. So we passed 90,000 views on the Rich Google channel. And why do I do this? I'm super upset that everybody's putting all their eggs in like this pensions, which if you're in Hawaii, 55% of it is funded. If you're in California, 69% of it's funded. My friends in Washington, yours is actually pretty good. But for the most part, these states are hoping that you don't make it to your average life expectancy to, so they'll have enough money. And that's messed up. I mean, most of you guys are pretty prudent. So you guys have your own uh, 401ks and stuff like that. But what I realized is all that 401k stuff is a bunch of nonsense. It's like a cafeteria of garbage investments. And in a way, these brokerages are in cahoots with the government, right? Put your money in this 401k stuff so you're captive to all these garbage mutual funds where there's high fees where you don't see them. And quite frankly, like you don't get that much return. You can get do so much better. So here I am, I'm giving you that red pill to help you edu get educated so you can make these better decisions and learn how the wealthy do things because it's not much different than how we do it, how you're taught. Well, actually it is very different, but it's not something that the average guy can't implement. So um, how did I get a little uncertainty in my life? I've committed to investing a lot of money into Bitcoin, crypto, I went a little, certainly anywhere from one to 5% of my net worth. Here is a little table of the number of, I guess you, the way to read this is like your investment level based on your net worth and potentially it goes all the way up to maybe a quarter to a big chunk of your net worth as a very huge part of your portfolio. Me, maybe I'm in this one category, right? Because for me, I operate real estate and that's what I know and I try and stay in my lane. I have a couple upcoming podcasts on Bitcoin and crypto. I am a libertarian and I believe in cryptocurrency as a way of taking back control from countries and putting it back into people. So I do see it as something like that and I do see it as um, a sustainable thing. And right now I, I see it as a land grab. But yeah, definitely not going to go crazy with this stuff, but like anything, educate yourself as opposed to just opening up an app and asking your buddy what they're investing in. How I balance the uncertainty is with certainty. And if you've taken a look at some of my past tax returns, you've noticed I don't pay very much taxes because I use passive losses from my investing to offset my passive income. And I try and lower my ordinary income as much as possible. You can learn more about this at simplepassivecashflow.com slash You can also see my tax returns on there, but here was a good one. 180,000 investment got $176,000 of first year passive losses. That's almost like a hundred percent return of losses right there. Some people think it's kind of messed up that the wealthy don't pay taxes, but then again, not everybody's pulling out their wallet put and putting money into each of these K1s represent a business venture that helps low income, middle class families with housing, making improving their community. And that's where the tax code is written. It is what it is. Those are the rules. The government wants you to invest, especially in things like real estate. And the way the IRS says it, if you do not invest, well then bro, you got to say pay some taxes, right? If you're a doctor making 600 grand a year, and you don't invest to get losses and you don't implement real estate professional status, do all these other things, you got to pay taxes. That's the rule. Lastly here, how do I get a little loving connection in a world where I can't see any of you folks? We're having a baby. We did a little drive-by shower, which I'm not super thrilled about the drive-by thing, but it is what it is. But there it was. I make all my social media stuff. I know a lot of people, they, it drives me crazy. Like it's so lame. Like people have these quotes like cash flow or passive income. I'm like, man, that's boring. I make all my social media stuff and I try and keep it light. So fencing the perfect COVID sport, mask, gloves, stab anyone that gets closer than six feet. And we try and network virtually, right? We've done this as a group within the foam and the incubator groups. Um, but hopefully we can start the in-person events here soon. And if you guys want to learn more about that, join the mailing list and join the club, simplepassivecashflow.com slash club. Um, I normally tell people what I bought because I usually like to go shopping at Amazon, but I'll be honest, I haven't bought anything because I've been buying all this baby crap and I don't even check the mail anymore because I know it's not even for me anymore.
But yeah, none of this was should have been construed as legal, tax, financial advice because I empower all you folks to think for yourself. And now's the time if you guys have any questions, type it in and this thing will feed it right to me. But hey, Craig. Yes, he said, I agree. The 401k is garbage. I think it was Craig that said that the 401k is like signing a deal with the government that you don't want to sign, where the government ultimately has a lien over everything you've got. So, you know, the government's got this big debt, right? All they have to do is say, oh, now we're going to tax this stuff at this rate as all the baby boomers taking money out of their return. I thought that was a great way of explaining it, Craig. So thanks on that. Yeah. He mentions the CARES Act was a golden opportunity to jailbreak money from the 401k. I don't know if you can still do it. You can backdate it for 2020, but maybe you guys can read the article to get ideas and talk to your tax professional. If you need a referral, let me know. But you can go to simplepassivecashflow.com slash COVID to learn more about that CARES Act jailbreak being 100 grand from your retirement account. Oh, somebody wrote a question. Are you noticing tenants wanting an extra or needing that other room so they can have their home office separate from their bedroom? Do you think that an ongoing trend, is this a B class and above class thing? So generally, like, I think people are putting more money into their living conditions as evident by like the substantial amount of home renovations going in. And I think this is partly to do with residential real estate prices going up. There is a trend, people, they're building larger bedroom unit mixes, so two bedrooms and three bedrooms. Not a huge amount more, but like very small, right, as these trends develop. I don't know what the mix is. We get the engineers and we figure out what, we just copy what the big developers are doing in terms of 27% one bedroom, 30% two bedrooms, or whatever that mix may be. But definitely, I think this is more of a B plus class or A minus class thing. A lot of our tenants are paying anywhere from $700 to $1,400 a month. B class, B minus class tenant. And a lot of these guys don't really work from home. And we have a few properties where we did have a lot of more white collar, blue collar mix. But for the most part, a lot of our tenants are working those jobs where they need to get out of the house or they're essential workers. They're the, the backbone of America. Having an extra room, that's that's first world problems. I think that's more of your A class kind of vicinity. And if you guys like this, uh, let me know. And hopefully we can do this again. And if you guys uh, want to join us next time, you can check us out on the YouTube channel and the Facebook group is where we, will, where we will live stream this. So another question here, in one of your podcasts or investors calls, you had recommended not to deploy more than $250,000 in a year. Is there any tax reason for this? I, I don't remember the context of this. I think what I was getting at, a lot of investors, they'll read that Rich Dad, Poor Dad book, that purple book that is the red pill of finance for a lot of people. And they're like, oh my God, I gotta get out of this like crap in investing in for all my life. And they go bonkers. They're going into all these alternative investment, private placements and syndication deals. And I've had people that invested half a million, million dollars in nine months. And I, I personally am, whoa, that's a lot of investing. Because the, the thing is, what's hard about syndication is anybody can put one together, right? Anybody can invest in it. But like in terms of putting them together, anybody can do it. You just pay $30,000 and supposedly you can magically do it. So I say that jokingly because not everybody should do it. And you, I sure as heck am going to invest in those deals with those sponsors. How do you determine who's legit? Well, it's really hard to determine who's legit. And if it were me, I would take the approach of putting my money in, going with the minimum and seeing how it works. Call me crazy, but I think that's a prudent strategy, especially when a lot of people that come into our group, they've been investing in the regular 401k stuff, the traditional investing model for 10, maybe even 40 years. We have a lot of old people in our group. Maybe I shouldn't say that. We have a huge range of ages in our group. Don't throw it away on some bozo who you just met. I just today, someone just mentioned that, yeah, they lost $100,000 investing with this other sponsor and they're happy that they found this, but it takes some luck. And I think to really feel confident into knowing that you're putting your money with good stewards is to build your network with other passive investors so that you feel comfortable knowing that other people have had good success in the past. But likely a lot of us and myself included, we don't have any people who are investing in these types of alternative investments. Most of the people that we associate with or go to work with or our families or parents 
just invest in the traditional mainstream retail stuff. So we don't have that network. But what I'm saying is that's why we created simple passive cash flow so that there is an opportunity to find like-minded individuals. And when you do, that's when magical things happen. And if you want to stop screwing around, that's where you join the family office or on a mastermind, the phone. I'm just saying. But I think that's the way into it. And maybe I see the $250,000 in one year thing. I think maybe where that came from was like, maybe you can go into a handful of deals in that first year with, you know, minimum investments being anywhere from 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. So you could go into a few deals and you can sit and wait and watch, see how the sponsor performs. Did they run off with your money to Mexico? They say that what they were going to do. Did quarterly distributions they start when they started or when they said it was going to? So that would be the way I would do it. When I started to buy rental properties, I bought my first three in Seattle. And my big first pivot point as an investor was investing sight and seen in Birmingham, Atlanta, and Indianapolis in 2012, 13. What did I do? I bought one property in Birmingham. I see how it worked. I paused for six months to a year. And then you know what? The damn thing works. So I unloaded. I unloaded all those Seattle properties that had really poor cash flow. And I went into and parlayed my money into those other investments. So to me, I'm not saying that you're going to do this, but I like the approach of getting proof of concept and then going all in. And no, Mark, you are not old. You were actually very youthful at heart. Any last questions here? Going once, going twice. If you guys like this content, please join the club, simplepassivecashflow.com slash club. You get access to the free e-course to start learning more about this stuff and check out the podcast. Again, all of these monthly webinars are held at simplepassivecashflow.com slash investor letter is where I house all these monthly webinars. And thanks everybody. And we'll see you next month. Bye. This website offers very general information concerning real estate for investment purposes. Every investor situation is unique. Always seek the services of licensed third-party appraisers and inspectors to verify the value and condition of any property you intend to purchase. Use the services of professional title and escrow companies and licensed tax, investment, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed as in every investment there is risk. The content found here is just my opinion and things change and I reserve the right to change my mind. Above all else, do your own analysis and think for yourself because in the end, you are the only person who is going to look out for your best interests.